Ladies and gentlemen, I am Yisrael, the game is War Thunder, and welcome to part two of Wager Woes. Yeah, so it's not going too well, is it? One win, one loss. When really, if I want to max out, I should be it's running seven to one or more. No matter, let's get back into battle. Tiger H1 once again. The kitty had its moment once I got on the flank of those Soviet tanks, but sadly, well, the timer and the reload of the 88 conspired against me. Oh uh, well, such is life. And indeed, such is tankery. Domination in Poland this time. This is, of course, going to be a three-point map. Bit more mobility, so I might well leave the Tiger at home for this one. And instead pull out... Well, I think we'll start with the Panther this time. And... Mm, might go for the Panzer 4H. Depends what kind of rating we get. Again, I suspect we're going to be on the tail end of a 6.7. Yes, that was me opening a bottle of something to drink. After the last battle, frankly, I think I deserved it. So, load up the panther. I didn't mean to pull all the armor piercing out of my tiger, honest. And to battle once again. Standard smash up for Poland, two spawn points each side. What do we got? M6A1, M10 Wolverine, Pans Tiger H1, Tiger H1, M18 SU5. I don't believe this. We've got a 5.7 cap. Woohoo! This is going to be a bit more even. They have, of course, got a solid selection of M18s to play with, the infamous Hellcat, so that's going to give them an advantage out of the blocks. They will probably get to the engagements a lot quicker than we do. On the other hand, well, just clear that stone pillar out of the way. They're Hellcats. Frankly, the 76mm is a threat, but that armour is so thin that if you don't get a bounce, you're going to mess them up pretty badly. Of course, if they get a shot into you early on, it's going to get very ugly very quickly. So, through this, not going to waste a round this time. Going to trade the speed instead. And kick into command of you just a moment. Most because this gives you a better idea of the gun elevation. Going to lead into the turn. Lead again. Okay, there we go. M24 Chaffe, T3485, is probably going to play peekaboo if he thinks he can get away with it. An M24 cannot. Uh, soak another hit from that 88. Come on, stick your head out again, mate. I'm going to be ready and loaded for you next time. All I need is one shot at your second road wheel, and you are going to brew like a full kettle. Ah, that was the sound of one of our Tigers exploding, so let's back up carefully, because T-34 is probably considering how best to flank us at this stage, and we'll let Comrade KV-85 take the lead instead, because he has much better armour on his flanks than we do. So, two points to one up, we've bagged the first kill of the match, so far we're on course for our second stage. And Mr. Moocher is not a happy tanker. Right. Okay, so advance forwards to start It's going to take a bit of a risk poking out here, but... In fact, I'm taking a considerable risk poking out here. Come on, give me something to shoot at. Critical hit. Nailed his gun breach. Okay, that's fine. That will actually cause him some real difficulty. Gives me all the time in the world to reload. And then someone else nails my gunner. Back, 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 back. Recover, recover, recover. There we go. Dug out. And in fact, I need to get the turret slewed round sharpish because that's a T-3485 on the flank. Horizontal drive's been hit as well. Come on, damn it. Come on, stabilize. Oh, don't tell me the vertical drive's hit. Got you. Driver and radio up are gone. I can start my repairs. Reload this. Hang on! I killed his damn driver! Maybe I just got his radio up and someone else got the driver. Who cares? So there's an M18 Hellcat up ahead. He's going to be considering how best to advance. That's more like it. That's how you kill a T-34, ladies and gentlemen. Second and 
well, first and second road wheels if he's moving. Low into the hull, you'll hit fuel, ammo, most likely ammo, and get a very satisfactory bang. Right, tank is fixed. Let's pull out a fighter bomber and go mess someone up from another angle. Especially since at this point I really don't want to get too heavily engaged. Just conceal the panther for a second. And there's a Kai 61. Oh good, I've got an EL 10 to work with. Good morning, comrade. Have some air to air fire. Um. Well, I suppose that's one way to do it. Now, can I keep this stable in battle? Come on, reduce power. I need to get the torque down just enough. No, that's not going to work. I think I may have had a bit of packet loss while I emptied my cannons at him, but not to worry. Pity, it wasn't the glorious tank-busting sortie I'd hoped for, but um, I'll take it. Enemy is dropping artillery on us again. Let's see if we can get a line up here. No joy, no shot. T-3457, not quite as nasty as the 85s, but still capable of putting an important hole in me, I think is the best way to describe it. Right, let's back up, see if we can blindside that Hellcat. Really all we have to do is hold this position. You know what, I'm going to let the Jumbo take point. Mr. Moocher has got much better armor. He's got that monstrously thick turret on the Sherman Jumbo. So, forwards, comrade meet shield. To glory. Yes, that will do quite nicely. Thank you very much. Now, who is shooting at you on the flank? Oh, look, an IS-1. Well, there was an IS-1. There's still an IS-1. Come on, reload, reload, reload. Traver yeah, he reloaded before I did. Oops. And in fact, APCR, yeah, that was going to go through my armor no matter what. Hmm. Let's break out the Tiger. I am feeling ventral. I also need to put in a proper ammo load. Approximately 40 rounds APCR. Sorry, APHE. I keep juggling terms in my head. I still think of it as Panzer Grenade 39 because, well, years upon years of driving German tanks, I do tend to think in the German terms. Anyhow, we've grabbed point A, advancing hard up. And, mm, yeah. Well, oh dear. Enemy is staging a counter-attack. Well, that's mildly unfortunate. Frontally charging a Hellcat is possibly not the wisest idea I've ever had. Especially not when that Hellcat is mount matching a KV-1. Really, comrade, do you honestly think you've got a... Oh, shit. You haven't, but he has. Excuse me, getting out of sight. That Su-85, however, has got a gun that can put a hole in my hide at that range. KV-1, well, maybe if it's a late model, but really the KV-85 is the model you need to really start messing up a Tiger. Mind you, Sherman Jumbo. Hello, comrade. Okay, bounced off his transmission armour. Now that's a 75. I don't think he can do too much to me. And that Hellcat certainly can't now because it's dead. Okay, okay, fine. You know what? You just st stay like that. Oh, an IS-1. Right, that is definitely more of a problem. Lay on, wait for Comrade IS-1 to poke his head out again. And I think, yeah, that just wrecked his gunner. He's having second thoughts, of course, he just wrecked my horizontal aim drive. Doesn't matter, somebody else just nailed the Su-85. I am going to back up discreetly and fix my horizontal turret traverse, because without that, this thing is basically a glorified Stug. And while the Stug life may choose you, there, I'm going to pass at the moment. We still need to grab these cat point backs. That necessitates another fast blitz into the enemy. There we go. Horizontal drive repaired. Around the corner again. Enemy should still be there. Well, he was still there. Good shot, whoever now that guy's ammo rack. And that's how you do the same to a T-34. 
Right, so what have we got? Machine gun fire coming one block left of here. Oh, looky. T-3485. Oh, crap. Well, luckily I got a shot off before he did, because otherwise that would have been very, very messy. 85 mil at that range? Yeah, that'll go through a tiger's hide. Okay, advancing once again. Again, we need to grab two control points back. That's one. That's stopped the rot slightly. But we still need to swing around. Comrade, hello. Goodbye. He's dead, Mr. Moochers. That guy's got a thing for American heavies. Can't say I blame him. They have some very nice tanks, especially the jumbos. Well, as long as you don't get flanked. But that goes for any heavy tank, really, except possibly some of the early series KVs. Speaking of flanking, where have you just gone? Okay, let's pull up in reverse remote, because there was something on this corner as well. There we go, Mooch is rolling up on that. So we've got the advantage back on terrain. Something just nailed that tree. don't think it was enemy tank. I think it was gunfire. But, hmm, awkward all the same. Right. Okay, so that has cleared C. M10 still out of range, no engagement there. And, oh, hello, Miho. Right, reload carefully. Very carefully. In fact, he's going to get out of line of sight before I can get my next shot. Is he going to come out the other side of the church? Possibly, but... He may not live that long. He's got an M6 and a... Oh, hello. Yeah, that's how the series should have ended, quite frankly. But hey, it wouldn't have been nearly so good a story. Hey, oh, what a... Really? And fix the tank. His turret crew's gone. Nice thing about the Tiger, one of its less appreciated features, is that it has a 30mm armour plate between the engine and the rest of the tank. A very handy firewall. If you do take some critical hits, come on, turret round, turret round, turret round. Come on, that's not going to traverse nearly far enough. Damn it. Okay, 22 seconds to repair. Someone else is going to have to kill that Jagdpanzer. The Sherman is going to be sticking his arrow. In fact, that's an M10. Sticking his head round. Oh dear, this is bad. This is very bad. Yeah, that's occasionally what happens if you get caught short. I shouldn't have been tempted by that. Yeah, Panzer. Oh, damn, he got lucky. If he hadn't taken that deflection. Okay, fine. Um, Backup Tiger or Panzer 4H? Backup Tiger, I think. We absolutely need to grab this point. We're still doing okay. We just need to grab... Either point B or point C, and then hope we can hang on. Okay, now we're even. They'll grab point C in a second. We just have to stop the rot. That's all we have to do. Stop the rot. Full throttle. No time for fighter bombers. We won't be able to get to the control point in time. Come on, full charge. Or at least as near to a full charge as this thing ever gets. 32, 33. They're going to take this out from underneath us, aren't they? Oh, damn it. Damn, they're 3 for 3. We now need to capture two back in very short order. Well. I can at least get... Well, I didn't even get revenge. I think we fired pretty much simultaneously. And in fact, the KV-2 would probably have done the damage anyway, because that high X of his is far less likely to hurt... Well, far more likely to hurt a... Oh. Come on. Okay, I've lost my gunner. I have lost my target. God damn, I've got some nasty lag here. Okay, right, so at this point I can just soak shot after shot until that 85 repairs and reloads. You'll notice I'm deliberately keeping contours him. I'm ignoring the KV-1. I don't think he's got the gunnery to do any damage. 
lay on. And yeah, the KV-85 reloaded before I did. Another couple of seconds, maybe if I traverse the turret, you can see there, didn't keep steep enough angle, and that did the deed. We're going to lose this one, sadly. <sighs> and that's the unfortunate truth of it. Sometimes the enemy does take it out from underneath you, especially if you don't pay attention to control points. I made one critical mistake there, very likely cost us point C, of course. I ignored that Sherman. I got tempted by the Jagdpanzer, I didn't cover my vulnerable areas, and by the time I got the Tiger's turret back round, well, that was the end of it. Right, still, 7 to 3. Normally not too bad a run. Of course, 2 assists on top, 20 hits. Yeah. First place, but if we look at what the other guy did in first place as well, that's what a Sherman Jumbo can do if it gets into a game. Of course, he also deployed his 76mm Sherman and his Cobra King as well, so he was deploying two Jumbos. I uh, wonder how he ended up splitting those 11 kills. However, one down and two losses. I lose one more battle, I lose the wager and cash out. So you know what? We're going to go seal clubbing. Just going to quickly upgrade my loader a little and also add to his vitality like so and then we're gonna go run a low tier game just get a little bit of lazy seal clubbing in because none of you needed convincing that the early T-34s are a little bit brutal in their tier well it carries on into the 1941 model those of you who see my 1940 vids let's just say that I didn't have to stage that, and I didn't have to do multiple takes. That was just literally log in, do my commentary, and just take the first battle that came my way. Let's see what we'll get this time. So, main advantage of the 41 model is that you get the uprated MD-8 fusing on the BR-350B round. And we'll start from inland, because getting up the beach is a pain in the neck. The other nice thing about the T-34 is its ammo stow, since it's all low down in the hull. One of the few sensible design decisions that any tank team made when it came to ammo stowage you actually have an advantage you can take a full ammo load and it doesn't adversely affect your survivability <sighs> anyway Panzervor to see I've got no idea what the Russian equivalent command was so we'll just go with Panzervor B's another possibility, of course, that's out on the left flank. We hit both of those, we can basically get a solid pincer movement going, especially if we can bog the enemy down in city fighting around A. Of course, if this fails, we're going to lose C and possibly B as well. Good news is I'll get there first comfortably, but they've got a fast move there. Is that an M10? No, it's a 75mm M3 gun carriage. That's the half-track tank destroyer. They've got a T-34 in the field as well. Not sure what model it is. Fine. We'll start by taking C. Just a little push forwards. And while we're at it, we will demolish this wall. Got the ammo to spare, unlike the German tanks, where I normally only take a half-load for safety's sake. Boom. Okay, go. Full throttle. We've got the gap in the wall this time, so we're full pace. Downhill to assist. And we're on the move. Right, so Stug 3A. Heat round could be a threat. 75 mil low velocity. Not if he's dumb enough to advance like that, however. Transmission fire, driver fire, lay onto his driver socket. Fire again, and that's the end of him. The Stug life did not choose him. Oh, look, another Stuggy. Come on, then. Boom. Stug life didn't choose him either. This was the downside of the Stug. They've got those three little ducks all in a row. And, well, that's where the pain generally starts. Ooh, Panzer 3E. Come on, reload, damn it. Reload, 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 reload. Boom. 
That was, yep, yeah, that was his fuel detonating. As I may have said before, this tank is utterly, absolutely brutal. If it's competently handled at its equivalent tier. Now let's give these guys a surprise. Fast advance to close the range, get to about 100 metres, and then... Surprise, comrades! Oh, a Panzer II DAC. That's... That's adorable. Welcome to War Thunder, comrade. Goodbye. Okay, that one I feel slightly guilty about, but fair enough. Right, taking a risk here. Side armors onto the enemy if they bother to get a shot at me. And they just did. Oh, what are you? You have the temerity to shoot at glorious T-34. Full stop. Lay on. Fire. Critical hit. That 75 in the M3 might be a problem. I'm in his arc of fire. Luckily, I think he's using... Yeah, I think he's actually just using his... Um, Oh, crap. Okay, machine guns. Okay, reload again. Fire. Do absolutely nothing. You trying to flank me, comrade. Tanker. Can't blame you. Doesn't help you, though. And the coffin claims another six victims. Right then. Who's next? There's an M2A4 over there. Could break sideways. Need to be careful about this M2 medium, though. Okay, he's only got a 37mm gun. Yes, it could still hurt. However, he is vulnerable, so... Give him a couple of hits to open him up. The machine gun probably won't do very much. Skid round. Get the reload. Miss again, somehow. Where did that one go? Come in for another pass. Reverse this time. What the... Okay, a little bit of lag. Come on, give me the reload. Come on, when you're ready, comrade. Gone. Who's next? Alright, there we go. I am I think I'm about to die. Yep, thought so. On the other hand, it did, I believe, require approximately their entire team to dispose of one T-34, and I took plenty of them with me. So, yeah. As I say, it um, the T-34 is just a teensy bit brutal, and I've got two of them. Unfortunately, the ammo isn't quite as good in the 1940 version. It's only the BR-350A shell with the MD-5 fuse, so not quite as potent, but at this tier it hardly matters, especially not when you're clubbing baby seals like M2s and Panzer IIs. Oh, I'm sorry, are you capturing a zone? The temerity of it! How dare they! Get that brick wall out my way. Come on, let's go. Do, 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 do. I think someone else is going to get there first and spoil my fun. Amillennium, of course, is in his own T-34. Hostile team has stopped capturing the zone. Yeah, that was pretty much the end of it for them, wasn't it? Come on, let's advance, see what we can get. Are there any enemy tanks? I mean, bags another M2. That's one of the mediums gone. Ah, no, there is still something up at point C. Okay, fair enough. And uh, there's another M2 over there. Right, get frontal, lay on. Ruin his day. And the only thing that saved him there was the sheer number of crew the M2 has, so another round finishes them off. <sighs> to be honest, I don't think the problem with balance is so much the T-34 as it is the BR-350 round. That thing is generating so much shrapnel and so much destructive force post-penetration that it's just night and day compared to the 75s on the German side. In fact, you know what? We'll finish this round because we're going to win this one. And then... Oop. Hello, comrade. Vile traitor, comrade, as it happens. Yoink. A 
I'll switch in my Panzer 4 F2s. We'll get a 4.7 to 5.7 rated game. And we'll have a look at what the 75mm Kampfwagen and Canons, the 40, L43 and L48s can do by comparison. The Panzer Granat 39, when you're used to the BR350, God, that round is a letdown. Anyhow, let them have their cap, let them have their pride. I'm just going to demonstrate to another tanker the potential downsides of the Stug life. Or maybe not. Come on, can I get something? No. Detonated against his armor. Oh well. Two for two. And the end result was absolute friggin' carnage. Oh, new paint job. Winter camouflage. Players defeated. And I finished my Stu-85 research. Even better. Well, I'm not going to bother purchasing that just yet because what do I want to pick up? KV-85, I think. Just to fill out the gap in my Soviet heavy lines at the mid-tiers. I did say that I'd do this, so we'll swap out my Tiger. Pull out my Panzer IV F2, Panzer IV G. We'll swap the Panther D out for a 4F1 and change the Panzer IV 70 out to a Stug 3F. So everything here is rated 4.7 or below. Right, and um, what we'll also do is just pop in the cruise skills. In particular, loader skill. This, more than any other skill, is the one you want to be sinking points into like a mad, mad thing. Panzer IV F2 expert, that's fine. Panzer IV H expert, excellent. Again, points into reload. The quicker you can cycle that gun breach, the faster it goes. No upgrading him, but we can get a few more points of vitality in. Right. So, to potentially the final battle of this wager, three Panzer IVs, all of them with the 75mm gun, be it the L43 on the F2 and the G, the L48 on the H. The other principal differences between the models is that the G and the H have got 80 millimeters on the front, the F2 has only got 50. Isn't going to make a massive difference against most guns. There are a few where it will push you over a line, some of the slower 75s and 76 mil guns, but typically most things, especially most things firing APCR, are going to go through you regardless. In many respects, these are very much the same tank, but we'll see how things go. And after that last Panzer IV driver we ran into, maybe I can redeem the Nishizumi name. Although somehow I doubt it. Right, we're heading back to Normandy. Domination again. Kind of works for me, actually, because I wanted a controlled test. And, well, same map, same map mode. We'll see if we can pull much the same tactics as well. Break south to sea to start with, and then engage on the flank. And you'll see the difference hopefully, between the Panzergrenade 39 and the BR... Oh, well, sod it, we've got the, uh... Wrong round, haven't we? Right, lose the high explosive, lose the heat. We'll keep half a dozen Panzergrenade 40 in reserve. Not so much about the armour penetration on that as it is about the lower angle of sensitivity. And then, to battle, starting with the 4G. So, M4A3E2 Cobra King. Ultra heavy tank. If I run into that as a hostile, you will realise that there is literally nothing I can do to his armour. Still, 4.7, 4.7, and what are we up against? Panzer 3M, that's 3.7. Tiger H1, right, this is a 5.7 capped game. So, we're going to run into a lot of kitties on the other side. No matter, let's get going. And Eugen P1 is in the Panzer IV Aus J. For those of you who are wondering about the difference between the H and the J, um, basically the J was the cheap and nasty model of the H. They stripped out a lot of important features, most notably the powered turret drive. 
which means that the gun is the same, the armor is similar, though it doesn't have the shirts and on the flanks, just on the turret. And unfortunately, it's um, its turret rotation speed is only about seven and a half degrees a second, which rather tells you everything you need to know about just how dire Germany's economic straits were when they designed the J. They were finally realizing that in war, quantity counts for almost as much as quality, but let's see how fast our little platoon of Panzer IVs can do on this beach. Advance, comrades! By tank doctrine I should be covering half left, but the only things over there are, well, drones and beaches. And the ships. All the ships. Could sink some of them for shits and giggles. Not gonna bother, since we need to get up and we need to get onto A. I'm actually going to push past and take the next access up off the beach because the enemy is going to be yep there we go they're engaging on a t3485 will be able to take the lead engagement there if he gets the enemy's attention along with the other panzer fours i should be able to blitz round come up on the flank and oh boy missed holy crap Righty ho thing with the Shum's course is you need to hit the right hand side of the turret to disable the gunner. You'll notice we got much less spawn that time around and hit him again. And there's a tiger on the beach. Get off the beach as fast as you damn well can. Right, so we're up on the flank. There's a T-3485 there. Oh, shitty balls. Right, move, break his line of sight before he can get the turret round. Thank God. And we're actually going to take a sharp right here, come up behind the enemy, I hope. Yep, there we go. Surprise, little comrades. Surprise. Turret traverse on the fours much faster than you might otherwise be used to. Knock him up the rear. Let's see how many I can kill before they notice me. One, and they notice me. Well, I suppose we could hetz. No, we can't hetz them. The Marder got turned round. Damn it. The one guy that was paying attention. Oh, well. At least we gave him something to think about. So I could pull a backup G, but let's pull out the H instead. Similar to the G, the slightly better gun and critically the shirts and ammunition as well. However, the enemy is still winning at this point. On the other hand, we do know that they have got some open-topped vehicles in the vicinity of A. So we'll barrage there. And then see what we can do. Oh, looky, M18. Lay on. Fire! Critical hit. What the hell, did we catch his gunner? Yeah, I rather think we did. One of the nice things about facing an M18. If you get the first shot into a Hellcat and you do get a detonation, then you're very likely to actually do some serious damage. However, we're still losing at this point, so we need to get round the flanks and start breaking A again. I'm also going to set Panzer Grenade 40, the APCR round, up as my next shot, because we know there are KVs and similar heavies on point A, so we're going to have to get rid of them. And standard Panzergrenade 39 isn't quite adequate to task. Someone else just fragged the Sherman. Fine, that's progress. Now that Marder is still lurking. Right, so let's take a risk. Poke out. See if we can get a spot. Which we couldn't. Okay, where is the Marder? Switch back to APHE. Come on, where are you, you little shit? And he's got the captured KV-1 running intercept for him. Okay, so... The Hetzer is arguably better suited to take the Marder than I am because of that slope on his frontal armour. In some respects, he's actually better protected from the front than, say, a tiger is. But at the same time, I need to get moving again, or we're going to start losing the control objectives. So, full advance. 
as always, always advance. There is always a way to advance. Even if it means you have to go round the enemy. And probably getting overly aggressive here. Missed the Marda. He's traversing like mad. But he's casemated. I'm turreted. And revenge is sweet. Right. Later the tiger. Fire! Boom. Ammo racked. Later that second tiger. Set up. Turret shot. Critical hit. Taking his gun up. You'll notice we're getting marge... Well, somewhat less spool from the... Ah, uh, damn it. Right, I've got noticed. Gonna have to get out of sight. Flat gun's brassing me up. Not much he can do against 80 mils of frontal armor. Hell, there's not much he can do against 50 mils, to be honest. But at this stage, he could cause me some difficulty. We'll drop artillery in to keep everybody's minds focused. Go round the block, come up behind them, and hope we can grab a back before they can reinforce. Then, of course, we'll have to get turned round fast. Dig in and hold A as best we can. Oop, Tiger H1 there. Taking that next turn is suddenly not an option. Oh, is he advancing? Taking that turn is not an option. Staying here isn't an option either. Move, 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 move. And then 24 is going to get reloaded probably before I can get around this corner. In fact, he's just wrecked my engine. Turret drives are gone as well. That's what I get for taking the risk. Get the artillery into play. Start repairs frantically. Soaking some hits here, but I am basically a dead tank walking unless I can get that engine fixed and it's a 45 second repair job. Turret's not going to come around anything like in time. Yeah, there we go. Crew dead. You'll notice I, I am taking up much of the and I'm still top of the scoreboard, which is frankly embarrassing. Um, right, final tank. Right. Let's let's pull out the G as a backup, because we need to grab these control points back. As fun as these flanking maneuvers are, they're not really contributing. And there's another Hellcat on the objective. Right, no wonder they were having trouble getting through. Fine. Let's see what needs to be done. APHG, again, preferred round for dealing with this. The M6, I think, can probably frag him. But... God damn it, what are you? Thank you very much, you little... Come on, reload. Got him. And I'd have had him 15 seconds earlier if you hadn't driven into me. Oh, well. Advance again. Bombs. Drive, Everd, drive! Well, he drove. That worked. Or he just soaked it. Not sure which. Right then. We need to grab this point back sharpish. And do what we can to stop the rot. Okay. Ye gods. And I'm leading on the kill count. Well, we're not going to stop the rot in time. And this is going to be the end of the wager. As I say, I didn't have some appalling luck these things, so let's, you know, let's just have some petty revenge. Yoink. Boom. Can I think of battleship? No idea. Right. Doesn't matter, we're gonna lose the round. Oh well, that's my fault for getting distracted, really. Should have been much more direct about playing the objectives, particularly A, and much less concerned about fancy flanking moves. But Panzer IV, straight up brawl in a 5.7 cap game, that's never gonna work. So that brings us to the conclusion of the Golden Wages. A mere 50 Eagles. First place in the team despite a frankly shocking performance. And well, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Until next week's lunchtime tankery episodes, farewell.